Well, hello everyone. This is Terry Roberts with DMAI, Destination Marketing Association International. And uh, we are so excited today to have this pretty exciting, fun topic to be talking about, saving money on your meeting. Who doesn't want to do that? We hear all the time in our planner surveys and in feedback that saving money and trying to figure out how to spend less and get more for your meeting is an important topic. So we thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to welcome my guest host as our meeting is being co-sponsored by Cvent this month. And I'd like to welcome George Shigori. George, hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much, Terry. Hey, George is currently the Senior Director of Sales at Cvent, and he um, is one of those guys with a lot of great experience, about 20 years of professional sales and hospitality industry work, and he's responsible for overseeing all the sales initiatives for the Cvent Supplier Network Division, from sales management to strategic partnerships. Um, with key organizations like DMAI. So George, we're so excited to have you uh, joining us today and we have some pretty uh, equally great panelists to talk to. And although I'm not supposed to have favorites, I do. Jo um, George Beth Witzak, who you've invited to join us today, um, is one of my favorite global account executives with Conference Direct. She's um, so warm and so willing to share her generosity and planner knowledge in our community. She is um, currently the committee chair of the Twin Peaks Charter Academy Fundraising Committee and also, as I mentioned, a global, a global account exec at Conference Direct. Um, and she specializes for her clients in site selection and contract negotiations. And uh, she, like George, has about 15 years of hospitality industry experience spending time in hotels, uh, the convention and visitors bureau side of the business, and now um, as an independent meeting planner. And certainly, last for introduction, but not least, our good friend, Julie Coker-Graham. And Julie is the executive vice president uh, with the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau. And since September 2010, um, she has overseen a staff of, con of convention and sales professionals in Philadelphia who are responsible for selling the expanded uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center and also Philadelphia's hotel package to um, her customers, their customers across um, the country. So Julie and Beth, welcome. It's so nice to have both of you. And look at those smiles. Too bad we're doing a webinar because uh, you gals and George all have a face for face-to-face, -face, without a doubt. All right. Did I lose everyone? No. Okay. Well, here we go. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, survey results from Cvent. We're going to spend a little time talking with Julie about the five factors of meeting desirability and how you can leverage those to get um, better negotiations and, and better pricing for your meeting. And uh, we're going to spend a little time talking about where to find deals and also resources to make your meeting negotiations more effective. So I'd like to turn it over now to George to talk about some of the top trends um, from their recent survey in terms of meeting destinations in the United States. Thank you, Terry, and hello, everybody. Um, so, you know, as Terry mentioned, I want to talk a little bit about destinations. And, you know, when you're talking about saving money and, and obviously planning a meeting, uh, picking your destinations is obviously uh, pretty important on that list. And uh, as uh, you know, one of the things that we did at Steven, we have launched our third annual list of top 50 destinations. And, you know, when we analyzed and look at the data, uh, you know, this past year, we saw some interesting trends that kind of stood out. Um, I'll kind of go down the list here, but first you'll see Chicago rose to our number one spot, which actually beat out Orlando, Florida for the first time. Uh, you see places like New Orleans and Nashville, um, always very popular destinations we've always seen with our planners, but uh, they actually made a list of the top 10 rankings. Uh, next on the list, you see St. Louis here. They actually climbed eight spots uh, to actually number 27 on our list. And then something you actually uh, only see about once a year, there was actually a brand new destination that made this list, and that's actually Louisville. So, you know, why do we bring this up? What does this mean to all of you? Um, 
And uh, why did all these Midwestern cities suddenly uh, see an impact this past year? And you know, there's a lot of reasons you can look at, but one of the things that came up was that uh, these central locations are offering competitive pricing. Um, now, uh, obviously, these cities um, are easy to get to for folks on the East Coast, but they also offer planners the most bang for their buck. And you know, that brings me to you know the ultimate question, the big question that everybody asks is, you know, when you talk about promotions and what you're offering. Uh, what do meeting planners want in group promotion? So at C event, you know, we have clients that are both suppliers and planners, and we really do act as that middleman for the two entities. So these suppliers, we talked to them, we basically asked the question and conducted a survey, and we got some of the results. So about 779 people responded, and we answered a few questions. So first and foremost, on our next slide, we talk about the why. So 95% of our planners are looking for promotions during the sourcing process. Our next slide, we look at the when. 42% of these planners are actually looking for these group offers when they're researching the venue itself. And lastly, one of the big questions is the how, is that 60% of these planners say promotions usually influence their final booking decision. Now, obviously, you know, we're looking at data, but, you know, since we have Beth, our sort of resident sourcing expert on the phone. Beth, I'm just curious, you know, how does this relate to you when you see some of these stats and promotions? Absolutely. Um, those trends fit right in with what I'm finding to be important to my clients. And, um, you know, jumping ahead to the concession, it's the easier access that us planners have to the concessions that we want in a central location in terms of a promotion the more time and money that we're able to save our clients, which is a win-win for everybody. And I think we see the same thing here. If you look at these top 10 concessions uh, lists, uh, no surprise, you see things on here like discounted room rates, uh, meeting room rates, uh, obviously something like uh, Wi-Fi, which is obviously can be an unforeseen and huge expense for your meeting planner. Um, and no surprise that this is what showed up on the list. But on the flip side of things, if you don't just look at it from the, the cost savings to the company, uh, you actually look at your attendees. We also found some interesting information. And again, I don't think uh, any shocker, but uh, the fact that Internet access really became one of the most important list of items here for our customers, that their attendees uh, are looking for a value add, you know, attending this conference. So, you know, Ultimately, again, Beth, I'd ask you maybe for your perspective, you know, on an every day when you're when you're talking about your attendees for your program, are there certain things on this list do you agree with, disagree with, perhaps maybe something you'd like to add? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you touched on the Wi-Fi, and that's becoming increasingly more important as um, certain market segments are using those mobile apps for their conferences more and more. Um, so that's definitely, you know, valuable to both the planner and the attendee because it's the way that they're communicating their conference information ahead of time and during the conference. So I'm finding that one to be, you know, more important in certain market segments, um, certainly in some other market segments where they're not using those apps. Some of these ones that are a little bit lower on the list are, um, you know, more important, um, for instance, the welcome reception is very important in certain market segments where they're really more of a social aspect to it and trying to um, connect with everyone once a year. So it's, it's um, right in line with what I'm seeing here. It just depends on what kind of a client that I'm uh, catering towards. And George, this is Terry. I would jump in to say, um, surprisingly, for me anyway, that um, one of our most um, popular webinars with Empowerment this year in 2014 was high-speed Internet access. And, uh, you know, we thought in a, maybe that might be too um, directed or, or too narrow, but in fact, um, very, very heavily attended. So, so we know that that is really becoming important to attendees and equally um, important to planners in understanding all the ramifications. Yeah, absolutely agree, and I think these are, you know, again, some of the things on this list are definitely, you know, no surprise to some of us, but uh, we're definitely seeing some new trends across the board. Great. Well, I'd like to turn now um, 
to Julie. And Julie, um, we know we talked a little bit about what's important um, to planners, where they're looking for deals and, and destinations that are moving up in rankings due to um, good pricing and good promotions. But I want to talk a little bit about the control that the planner has in negotiations. And we know, quite frankly, um, that not all meetings are necessarily created equally, and that it pays for a planner to understand what specifically makes their meeting more or less attractive to the hotels that they are considering, and use this information to be flexible um, where they can in order to get hotels to perhaps sharpen their pencils. So Julie, I'm wondering if you might, first of all, um, just kind of educate those planners who have joined us a little bit about the desirability continuum as it relates to lower or higher negotiation leverage. Absolutely, um, and, and, and you're exactly right. You know, that not all meetings are created equally, and and certain destinations have, you know, what what I would refer to as soft periods um, or need periods in some cases, and certainly seasonality. Um, also for, for the planners, certainly the, the room pattern. So in terms of you know, whether they're starting a convention on a Tuesday or a Sunday, um, certainly can help them um, negotiate and get more bang for your buck, if you will. Um, but the more that can be uncovered and actually given to the destination and or hotels um, during the discovery process um, will allow the planner to have a lot more flexibility and also a lot more options when it comes to um, budgeting process. Okay, Julie, then let's take a, a deeper dive into these five factors. And, and we know that planners in sort of this recovering um, market and the shift that is uh, slowly occurring from sort of the buyer's market to the seller's market are getting a little frustrated with their RFP response, or should I say sometimes their lack of RFP response. So I know reaching out to someone like yourself can help planners better understand specifically um, what's going on in the destination. So how would you advise with regard to factor number one, um, how meeting rooms to guest room ratio affects negotiation leverage? Certainly. Um, I think all of us, you know, any suppliers on the phone as, as well as destinations understand that Often, I'll, I'll use an example of medical meetings, um, tend to need a lot of breakout space. Um, but what that does for, um, so let's just say that it's a you know, 350 room hotel, and you know, the block um, is, let's say, 50 rooms on peak. However, there's two ballrooms, and let's just call it you know, 10 other breakout rooms. And the group that has 50 rooms needs all of that space. Um, it limits the hotel's ability, and this can also apply to convention centers as well, it limits the ability of the hotel to have inventory and availability of meeting space for the remainder of the hotel rooms that they want to sell. Um, so certainly some key factors to, to keep in mind is, is a balance of hotel rooms to meeting space, because ideally you want to be able to um, you know, maximize all of your hotel rooms and, and have enough available good space, if you will, um, to be able to put two, either two groups simultaneous, especially if it's a group that isn't going to be able to take up the entire um, hotel. And Julie, reaching out to you before a planner puts together their RFP, you might be able to advise them or someone, a destination expert like yourself in any destination, would be able to advise a planner how they um, might sharpen their RFP or which hotels um, might be able to work with them um, with their space requirements more effectively than others just based upon what you know about your hotel products. Absolutely, because the your convention services, I mean your convention visitors bureau, we have destination knowledge. So we know in our destination, you know, the transient patterns as well as group. So often, you know, hotels that have a strong transient um, might be able to be a little bit more flexible with their meeting space when it comes to group because they know that they can fill in their hotel rooms with either project rooms and or strong transient business. And then on the flip side, we know those hotels that are group heavy, if you will, um, and have ample space to the amount of guest rooms that they have. So 
um, your convention and visitors bureau are, are really the, the experts of the hotels that are in that destination and can, prov and can provide you with options that would fit best with your program and or make suggestions to make possibly that less desirable program even more desirable. Great, Julie. So talk to me about factor number two, um, the history um, or of a particular meeting and how that plays into planners who are hoping to get a good deal. Certainly. Um, history, history is key because a lot of decisions are made off of that. Almost all of your sales managers and hotels, as well as your convention bureaus, um, any good director of sales is always going to ask their sales managers for history um, because certainly as well as you know, organizations are trying to limit their liability, whether it be through attrition and so forth, and overblocking of, of hotels, your hotels and convention bureaus are looking for the exact same. They want to make sure that they're limiting their um, liability and exposure. So the history that you can show um, certainly is, is huge. So for example, if your history of, of let's say, blocking you know, 800 guest rooms and you only pick up 600, um, that's going to lower, let's say, your negotiating power because the questions are going to be asked, well, why do you block 800 or contract 800, but you, in the past, let's say, three years, have only picked up 600? And unless there's either a program that's combining and, and you're going to get to 800, you're, you're leaving that hotel exposed for those 200 rooms when you turn them back over. So um, it's important that you have good solid history versus you saying that you contracted 800 rooms and you actually in the past have picked up, picked up let's say 750, then you have a higher level of negotiation because you can show that in the past you um, haven't left a lot of um, you know rooms to chance, so to speak. Great, Julie, which leads us into factor three, which is you being able to educate planners about the time of year, because I know that you have availability um, to look at the historical occupancy in your destination. Sure. The, the other thing, just before we move on, I would say quickly is that in terms of history, there's actually a tool in empowerment that, that Terry will go over later that will help you and assist you in um, keeping track of your history, which is, which is great. Um, so in terms of time of year, um, time of year obviously is key to any destination. So for example, it, it just so happened, I, I just left a meeting with a client who has a, a piece of business that literally falls between uh, you know, Christmas and New Year's, which is fantastic because it's what we, what we refer to as a D period. Um, so considering the time of year uh, for destinations is key. For example, weekend pieces of business are great, or a convention that, or a meeting that can start on a Sunday certainly is, is great as well. Um, so you have to know your destination and what they would consider to be their need periods. Um, a group that falls, let's say, over Memorial Day week. You know, if you have flexibility and you may not necessarily want to start on Memorial Day, but you're willing to start your conference that Tuesday then obviously you would have much higher levels of, of negotiation um, because you're falling over what would historically be a need period. Um, most popular months, obviously, for citywide conventions in the, in notoriously have been October and November, March and April and May um, for most of the destinations, and obviously March and April depend on Easter. Okay. So to those planners who might say, well, you know, my group's never going to meet over a holiday. Do I have an opportunity to garner good rates? You can also look at dips in destinations between groups or dips, um, you know, in softer weeks. Might not be as soft as the week between Christmas and New Year's, but historically softer or not prime. Because if you mention that's a D date, there must be an A, B, and C dates as well. Absolutely, and, and that's a question that definitely should be asked. Um, you know, I would hope that all of our, our destinations are offering that. Um, for example, if, if a group says that they have flexibility to meet, you know, in, in Philadelphia, you know, between April and let's say May, nine times out of ten, we're first going to try and push them into the April time frame because we know that May is a greater demand. But what we should also be doing is saying, I've got two options for you. I have a May date but I also have an April date, and hopefully your concessions and or rates and or um, what your, your package that you're offering will show 
that if you can kind of push them more into April and or even March, it should yield a much better benefit than if they were to fall a week in May. Great, Julie. So then factor four, um, which you've touched on, so I'll just ask you to briefly comment on the importance of, rival, of arrival and departure patterns. So needless to say, I hear from my hotels all the time about arrivals and departure patterns. Um, you know, a lot of conventions and or meetings want to, you know, do Tuesday, Wednesday, which is obviously extremely popular. Um, but you have a higher uh, level of negotiation and leverage when it can arrive on a Sunday and or a Wednesday. Because hopefully if it's coming in on Sunday, it, it's a Sunday, Monday, and out on Tuesday. Or if it's coming in on Wednesday, it can be Wednesday, Thursday, and certainly if you're lucky to also stay over on Friday. Um, so having the ability and flexibility um, is certainly key, and obviously it can yield your organization some key benefits. So Julie, last but not least, um, factor five, really being able to communicate the total revenue potential beyond just the rooms needed is important, is it not? Yes. I mean, we, we should be looking at the total picture, whether it be the destination and or a hotel. We should be looking at the room revenue. Um, obviously, you know, if, if, if catering is involved, food and beverage catering or audiovisual, um, lounge activity, what, what you're going to actually see in, uh, in the meeting spaces and or the restaurants and the outlets. Um, and that's the type of information that you want to communicate. We've done conventions here where they've done, let's say, numerous ICWs in conjunction with groups. And so we take a look at how um, you know, that's going to affect the destination well, not just the hotel rooms um, and the obvious um, you know, convention center rental and or food and beverage rental, or if we're talking about a hotel piece of business, but how also the revenue is going to spill out into the city and affect the destination as a whole. That's good information, really, Julie, on all five factors for planners to consider when they're looking to garner a better deal for their meetings. And uh, so now we promise to show, actually, where there are some deals to be had. And uh, Julie mentioned empowerment.com. And I wanted to just show empowerment is Destination Marketing Association International's um, collection, if you will, of the best destinations that can help you as you are trying to figure out where to take your meeting, how to find the best deal for any size meeting, whether it needs convention center space or it's a rooms um, that are a group that needs rooms for maybe only 50 people. So in each destination profile at Empowerment, if that particular destination has a special offer or promotion, you will see that on the front information tab. And Philadelphia has a cool promotion going right now, Julie, um, in terms of being able to actually bid on a meeting. Tell us just a little bit about that. So we were given the opportunity to partner with PCMA, uh, which is great. And so each year, PCMA uh, auctions off a meeting for a future year, which benefits the foundation. And so this year, we were the city that was chosen. And so we actually have a promotion with PCMA where we will auction off a meeting. Um, the starting bid price is 75000 And to outright close the auction, 125000 And again, it does benefit PCMA's foundation. And we put together a number of factors throughout the destination that would benefit um, the customer. So, there's such things as not just the typical, but there's discounted hotel rates, discounted um, food and beverage at, at the convention center, as well as it's, uh, discounted rental. And then we've also done some things that will be um, attractive to the attendee, so whether that's discounts at the cultural attractions. And then also we've done a special promotion with Wharton School. And so there's a specific uh, certificate program that we are offering um, that board of directors for that association that they can take um, advantage of. Very cool um, for partnering um, with PCMA, doing a lot of good, and hopefully helping uh, planners find some pretty nice deals for their meeting. George, would you like to talk with us about the CVENT Promotions Hub and how planners can find out what um, might be available in your exclusive collection of meeting offers. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, so those survey results we kind of reviewed uh, before were not just really for our knowledge. We wanted to take that information and start sharing it with all of our supplier clients uh, for several months now, and that's why we went ahead and built the Cvent uh, Promotions Hub. It's basically full of meetings-focused offers, you know, anything from that Wi-Fi we talked about before for free or meeting space discounts or, you know, really any kind of planner incentives you can think of. You know, I see a couple of them recently that have been more around things like a free iPad or something of that nature, too. Um, but uh, the Promotion Hub is actually completely free to use, and I would just say invite all of you to come visit and browse our Promotions Hub uh, and see if it's a good fit for you. Um, I know uh, our planners, like Beth, have been using it a great deal, and uh, Beth, I don't know if, uh, you know if there's any particular promo you've maybe selected recently that might stand out or something that helped you recently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, I think I may have been the first planner ever to actually book a um, promotion from the Promotions Hub. But back in January, I was looking for a short-term meeting in New Orleans for February, and they happened to have a Sunday arrival pattern, and there was a hotel offering a Sunday arrival pattern right there in the Promotions Hub. So it was actually one of the first things I saw. I was able to easily click it and add it to my RFP and take advantage of that promotion, and the client did end up booking there. So it was easy and in a great place and um, made it really simple for me to uh, shine for my clients. That's really cool, Beth. Did you find yourself, um, you know, I just love for you, I know Cvent is a, a great portal. We've got destinations offering interesting promotions at Empowerment. How do you just, I want to ask you a personal question. I didn't really tee you up for this, but how do you keep yourself um, aware of what is available to take advantage of? Sure, because there are a lot of promotions out there. In fact, I think on the last webinar um, with Cvent, we talked about it's raining promotions sometimes, <laughs> and they come at you <laughs> from a lot of different directions. And so um, any tool that can really help me sort through the promotions quick, easily, um, you know, whether it's state-based or, you know, a specific destination-based is something that I will use. Um, so the Promotions Hub lets me do that quite easily. Um, I do also get quite a lot of direct promotions, um, so that, that is helpful as well. Uh, it's just, you know, it's hard to line up that right time and right location for promotions. And so when you have a tool that can really do that for you without you having to dig through the promotions that have all rained down, um, it's priceless. That's, that's great. So we want to remind everyone as we close, we're, we're going to take some questions. So if you have a question for George, for Beth, for Julie, please go ahead and submit it now in your question box. But we hope that you will avail yourself to the services of destination marketing um, executives like Julie and, and all of the fine folks that are found um, at Empowerment where you can get a person actually to kind of walk you through the specifics of each and every destination, use their local expertise, their market uh, relationships, and their services are also free to you because they have been paid for by those vested in tourism in each of the destinations they represent. So um, again, empowerment.com is an opportunity for you to check them out, get connected with them quickly. And you have earned today um, a half an hour of CMP credit in Domain A, which is strategic planning that allows you to be a little bit more strategic um, with finding better offers and making better deals as well. So we will be sending uh, a recording link for today's webinar if you'd like to share it with anyone on your staff along with your certificate. And you should be getting that either end of the week or early next week. So please make sure that you keep checking your email box and even check your spam because we find that it often gets stuck in there and you think we didn't send you your certificate. And in fact, um, we did. So um, I'm going to kind of turn to um, take some questions right now, if I can. So let me see. Um, somebody had asked if they're going to get the PowerPoint, and yes, um, they are. OK, so this is a question um, for Julie. Julie, is the promotion 
um, that you have with PCMA available to current clients who are working through the contract or consideration phase at the moment who are not yet definite? As long as the piece of business is an existing tentative or a new tentative, it just doesn't apply to those meetings that are already definite. And it is something that runs for programs that would fall between 2015 and 2025. Great. So between 2015, 2025, and it cannot currently be definite, correct? Correct. Okay. Shimo, have you seen any interesting questions um, that you would like to pose for any of our panelists at this point? Yes. Thank you, Terry, and excellent job by the panelists. Um, we have a planner that is challenged with finding um, the right space and hotel block, uh, especially if, as, as you say, um, they're a space hog, meaning that they need all the space and very little rooms. Um, what kind of advice can the panelists give us in terms of really finding the right location for um, a hotel that's, that's going to want to take that? What, what are the conditions that they're looking for? And Hi, maybe I could go ahead. Beth or Julie? I certainly have some ideas on that, and it definitely all ties back into really um, looking at the dates. If they're flexible at all on their dates, that's a huge helper. But also really um, in the past when I've had space hogs, I know there are certain hotel brands that will often have um, space-heavy um, hotels. Um, you know, there's, in every city it seems like there's one or two hotels that may have far more space than they need. For instance, you know, 90,000 square feet of meeting space to about a 200-room hotel. Well, they're a little out of alignment with your usual hotel, and that's an awesome hotel to sell if you're on the other side because then you have never have that space-to-rooms ratio issue. So if you can find one of those hotels um, to take your space hog, or if you can get into one of those date times um, where it might be more of a needs time, those would definitely help um, make that business more attractive to a hotel. And Julie, I have one question for you. Um, and this comes up a lot. Planners who need perhaps um, a piece of space, whether it's at a convention center or an off-site location, but really only require just a couple of meeting rooms or uh, sleeping rooms because it may be really a local meeting. How do they um, attract um, hotels to even look at a piece of business like that, or are there other options for them? Oh, I, I mean, that coming from my hotel days before joining the Bureau, that that type of group is kind of music to your ears because it leaves, you know, the remainder of your hotel inventory and then also all of your meeting space to be able to sell, whether it be to another local piece of business where they can generate food and beverage revenue um, or a, an entire other group. So having um, a rooms-only piece of business, which you, you kind of described, is, is great. Um, but the Convention and Visitors Bureau, again, in, in the different destinations has the ability because they're intimate, they have intimate knowledge about the varying products and they also know, you know, kind of their peaks and valleys and, and need periods so they can certainly steer you in the right direction for that type of business. The other thing that I would say is I, I definitely 100% agree with Beth and, and the suggestions. The other thing I would ask, I would offer is if a group happens to be a space hog, if there is a hotel that is connected to a convention center, that can also work. So maybe some of your rooms or maybe all of the hotel rooms um, could be at the hotel, but then you might be able to put some of that meeting space at the convention center and, and kind of toggle back and forth. And that, that could be an option as well when you have a group that can be a little bit more of a space hog. We do that a lot with the Marriott and the convention center here in Philadelphia. Okay, great. Yes. I could I take it back off, uh, Julie, one last time? Um, you know, I am a big believer in collaborating with the CVB. So like Julie said, they really know what's happening. So if you have a space hog and you can find a time period where there's, say, a softball 
tournament in town, and they take up all of the, um, you know, most of the sleeping rooms, but not much of the meeting space. A CBD will be able to tell you when that's happening, and that might be another good option for you to piggyback off of. Yeah, well, you're right about the sporting event or some kind of convention that requires a lot of rooms and maybe all of their spaces at the center so the hotels do have more flexibility. So I think the answer is there's solutions out there, and it's all about asking the right people the right questions. So, so appreciate that. I don't specifically see any more um, questions on our board that have not been addressed or answered. So I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us and, and also provide you with some good ways to keep in touch with us. So you see our um, web addresses, our LinkedIn groups, uh, where we would love to talk to you more in discussion. Um, we have a great bi-weekly podcast that we'd love to invite you to listen to. And you see um, email addresses both if you are interested in uh, reaching someone directly at Empowerment or at Cvent. And uh, we hope that you'll also visit our blogs to um, hear more great information about how you might be able to garner the best deal in the destination that you're headed to. So thank you all for the panelists. I agree with uh, Christine, who said that our panelists did a great job today. It was wonderful working with you. Um, have an excellent uh, day and weekend ahead, and take good care. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. everyone.